when you go out to play a round of golf, do you expect to get better? Do you think you're going to improve? Why or why not? Let's tee it up. Welcome to Data Access Golf, your home for rapid golf improvement. And now, from the thin air of the Rocky Mountains, next on the number one tee, your host, Aaron Stewart. Hello, everyone. Welcome to another episode of Data Access Golf, the podcast. Appreciate you taking time to be here with us today. So, yeah, I I got a question from a buddy of mine. He had the opportunity to go down to southern Utah and play some golf over the weekend. He went down with his brother. They uh, played 36 holes a day and got to enjoy it. And for us that live up in northern Utah where it's covered in snow and we don't have opportunity to play, that's kind of where we go. We either fly out to California, we'll, we'll head on down to Las Vegas, or uh, maybe grab a, a flight to Phoenix, but that's kind of what we do. Uh, St. George is like three hours away, so it's, you know, mid-50s during the winter, so we can go down there and play some golf. He went down there with his brother, had the opportunity to play, and then came back and he gave me a call and we were talking about it. And he asked me, how in the world can I play 36 holes a day and, and not get any better? And it's a great question. It's a perfect question. The, the, the actual answer to that is if we're not doing things the right way when we're playing golf, the whole concept that you can get better is sort of ridiculous. Um, if you don't take a few steps to make sure that you've set your play up to make you better, there's a very real chance that you've just gotten worse. Um, not all play is the same, and not all play is going to benefit your game 100%. Maybe certain aspects, like uh, maybe putting, you'll be able to, to develop some feel. Obviously, chipping and around the green takes some feel and takes some practice. And, and when you've been up in a, a winter-covered area for a while and you don't have a lot of time to practice or opportunity to practice outside, then you can lose some feel. And so some of that might improve your play a little bit, being able to practice. But if you um, are out there playing, assuming that you're going to get better, I think it's a bit of a stretch. And here's why. First off, I don't necessarily believe that when you're out to play, you should worry about getting better. I do think that there's two ways to play golf. There are practice rounds where we go out and we're trying to take the things that we're working on, on the range, out to the course and trying to implement them when we're playing. And that's definitely a process. That's definitely something that we can do to make that happen. But when we go out to play, and in this particular case, when my buddy was out there with his brother, they were keeping score, they were being competitive, and when you're in that type of situation, learning anything is, is just not a good way to go, right? When you're out there to perform, the whole idea of getting better should just go out the window. It's a completely different mindset. Really, when we're about playing and we're about performance, it's about keeping the conscious mind out of our way and playing as good as we possibly can. And our very best golf is what I guess we'll call subconscious golf. And I'll, I'll use an example here. When a, a few years ago, I had stepped off a curb uh, in, in the dark and I had wrenched my knee and it hurt badly. Went and got an x-ray. X -ray, there was nothing structurally wrong with it but I had tweaked a tendon or something because it absolutely hurt. And when I put any weight on the outside of my back foot, so my right foot, it absolutely screamed bloody murder. And it would literally bring tears to my eyes. It hurt so badly, but I wasn't going to give up playing golf with my buddies and getting out. I could actually walk on it okay. It was just when my weight shifted to the outside that it hurt horribly. And so I'd go out and play golf. Well, I was so concerned. I have a tendency to kind of get to the outside of my right foot, my back foot sometimes, especially with the driver. Well, when I would do that, and it's not a good place to swing a golf club from, when I would do that, my knee would hurt. And so I was completely focused on one thing. I had no mental capacity to worry about anything else because I was just simply trying to keep my weight 
off the outside of my foot and that's it. That meant I had to make sure that my trailing hip, my back hip was going backwards at the start of um, when I was taking the club back just to make sure that my weight never got to the outside of my back foot. I was doing everything I possibly could to avoid that. And you know what? I played amazing golf, really, really good golf. Thane will back me up on this, my good buddy Thane. I went 12 rounds in a row in the 60s. Broke par every single time. And I was injured. So the joke became, hey, when that knee starts feeling better, Thane was going to take a ball-peen hammer to it, and we were going to make sure that I always played pretty good golf from that point forward. It didn't really register to me that, I mean, to me what registered was, hey, I just need to make sure that my weight stays on the inside of that foot in order for me to play really good golf. Well, as everybody listening to this knows what happened, my knee healed. I continued to try to focus on keeping my weight on the inside and it just stopped working, right? I I went back to my mid seventies type golf and I, I didn't break par for, you know, for a while. It was just sort of hit and miss. And that was uh, a little disappointing. I really thought that I'd, I'd glommed on to something, right? The secret, the secret of my golf game was I had to stay on the inside of my back foot and I could shoot in the 60s and play really, really good golf. Uh, no, that's not what was happening. And all of us have been caught into this. We've, we've read in Golf Digest or we've, we've heard a tip from somebody on TV or maybe a a video we got in our email box or inbox, whatever it is, we have listened to a tip, we've got taken it out to the range, we hit the ball really well, we take it to the course, we play a couple rounds really well, and we say to ourselves, I've got it, I figured it out. This is the tip for me. Golf now makes 100% sense to me and I can score like this forever. My golf game is cured. And that's total crap. That's not the way it works. The only reason I performed well when my knee hurt and the only reason you performed well when you had this tip is because your conscious mind was so taken up with this new information or taken up with the idea that I didn't want to hurt myself that that's all it could focus on. We took the conscious mind out of it and the subconscious mind played golf and we played beautifully. That's it. We just got out of our own way. And that's the beauty. So when we go out to play and we're looking to score, we are doing everything we possibly can to not try to control our golf swing, to just stay out of our way. So whether it's the shine on the ball, whether it's picturing a target so clearly in your mind that nothing else can come in, all of that, that needs to happen when we're talking about performance. And then if things don't work out well and we don't really perform very well, then we've got a problem with our golf swing. We're going to take care of that back on the range. So if there is bad things going on, make sure the conscious mind is just interested in your golf swing and try to feel something that you can take back to the range and try to replicate when you have a piece of technology strapped to your club or a trackman or whatever so you can see what in the heck is going on with real feedback and real data. Then we can work on it on the range. Then we can see what the real problem is. Not some sort of made up fake sort of interpretation of what went on on the golf course, what really is going on. And that comes with technology that comes with feedback, accurate feedback. Now I talked a little bit about yesterday about Matt Kuchar and I said, I wasn't really sure what Matt Kuchar was doing. I did a little bit more research today. Matt Kuchar is using a track band. In fact, track band sent out a announcement, I think it was on social media or what, maybe it was an email. I get their emails as well that said, congratulations, Matt Kuchar, team track man or whatever. Okay. So Matt Kuchar, we know now is using technology and getting accurate feedback. And that's why his swing looks so precise. So that mystery is solved. His swing looks very, very precise. Well, that work is being done on the range. And when Matt Kuchar is out playing, he's not thinking about whatever he was working out on the range. He's thinking about scoring. He's thinking about targets. He's thinking about those things. And, and those guys that play for a living understand that. They get into the weeds on the range. So when, when um, Dustin Johnson is dialing in his wedges with a track man on the range, he's dialing in certain fields for that day. And then he takes it out to the course and he knows, hey, this is going to go 75 yards today. Right? It, this field may not go 75 yards tomorrow, but it's going to go that much today. Okay, so, so cool. 
So when you get done playing that way, right, and you're just focused, you're just taking the conscious mind out of it and you're just playing and you run into some problems, then go ahead and make sure that the conscious mind is interested in what's occurring in the golf swing. Not trying to control the golf swing, but just sort of recording for posterity's sake what is actually going on and then go back to the range and try to recreate whatever you felt, Whatever the conscious mind picked up, whatever you felt was going on, go try to recreate it. See if you can see that shot again. And hopefully you've got a piece of technology that can record that. And then you can see the accurate feedback and know exactly what's going on. Not some sort of ridiculous interpretation of what you think is going on. Because chances are what we think is going on and what is really going on is not going to be accurate. At least not until we've embraced technology long enough where we really understand the facts, the data. And then when we go and actually practice, that's when we can kind of get into the weeds where we can try different things, where we can force ourselves to try different things, where if we want to take the club outside and see what that produces, then we have technology there to tell us, oh yeah, this is working, this isn't working, that feel works, that feel doesn't, and kind of work through it. Now, these feels that we're getting as we're working and practicing are not going to be feels that are reliable for the long term. But it will give us at least an idea of what's working that day and what it feels like different from what we have been doing. And then we just have to keep an eye on it. Now, I, I've, I've said this many times and somebody called, it on, somebody called me on this the other day and I appreciate it. I talk about don't trust feels, but then I talk about going to the range any particular day, strapping on a piece of technology, figuring out what your swing is going to feel like that day and then go with that feel. So I'm talking about don't trust feels and then I'm talking about trusting feels. Well, feels, I'm just saying that feels change day to day, especially when you start. Now, that all being said, when you start using technology and you realize what your tendencies are, you will start to develop what I'd like to say sort of macro feels and those rarely change, right? For me to be on plane, it always, and this is what you'll learn in your own swing, for me to be on plane always feels like I'm taking it outside, outside the plane, outside the target line. I'm not taking it outside the target line. I have data to show me that that's not what's going on, but I know that I've, I've swung 17,000 times with a piece of, with the swing bite on that lets me know that even though it feels outside to me, that's me. That is really me. Even though it's outside to me, that feel always is the same. Now that all being said, when I get to the top and set my wrists and come down, whether I come inside or outside or all of those feels are different every single day. I have not got to a point where I know I can trust all of those feels. So those are different from day to day. But the one feel that is absolutely 100% true every single time is I have to feel like I'm taking a little bit outside in order for it to be dead on plane, dead on the target line. And you will figure out in your own swings what those real feels are that last forever and what those feels are that are variable from day to day. And then you can work with that. And so when I get to a point, when I get warmed up to go play around, I know that all day long, I'm going to have to feel, it's going to feel like I'm taking the club outside and all my practice swings will have a little of the club going outside because I know based on the data that that is definitely down the target line, perfectly square. And it has been Long term, it never changes. Now, what goes on from that point back and back down through the, the, my golf swing, that can change day to day. And that's how I play golf. And you may find that it always feels a little inside. You may find that it's dead down the line. You may feel whatever. You may find that up at the top of your swing, in order for it to be on plane, always has to feel like this and whatever that is. But you will, feel the, you will learn the real feels and you will learn the feels that don't stay consistent day to day by using technology and getting that feedback. And that's the beauty of it. We're all different. And then when we get out on the, on, on the course, we can then mess with the feels that we know that change, that don't stay consistent based on ball flight. And that's where it becomes super, super fun that you can make on course adjustments because you know what your real feels are and you know what your fake feels are and you know how to manipulate those based on your ball flight for that day, your ball shape. When you go out to play and, you, and it's about performance, just take the conscious mind out of it, focus on something that takes the conscious mind out of it and just let it happen. 
If you're playing bad, then go to your conscious mind and say, look, I want to record what's going on here so I can take it to the range, strap on some technology and figure out what it is and then make that part of your practice. Not what we thought was happening, not what we felt was happening. None of that matters. We just want the data, the true stuff, what's really going on and then work on that. And the more we do that, the more we will understand what feels are real and consistent and what feels are not. And that's how we learn our golf swing. Your first introduction to technology and videotaping your swing and all of that to accurate feedback will freak you out because chances are what you thought was going on and what was really going on aren't going to match. So you just have to accept it. Once you kind of get through that acceptance phase, then we'll get into what feels are real and what feels change day to day and we'll deal with it. Anyway, so hopefully to my buddy that helps. I told him that I would talk about it. So hopefully that works for you and helpful to you. Any comments, questions, please let me know. Dataaccessgolf at gmail.com is the best place to get hold of me or you can leave comments at the bottom of the podcast, which also works. And remember, better data always means better practicing and better golf. Thanks. Thanks for listening to Data Access Golf with Aaron Stewart. Check us out online at dataaccessgolf.com and we'll see you on the next episode.